Hey guys, so uh, we figured it was time to make a video about doing wheelies. Um, I would do it in an area safe, maybe in Mexico, closed course. Uh, we don't condone or accept any, we don't condone any um, hooligan acts and we don't accept any liability for when you hurt yourself. Break your fingers, break your hands, break your toes, wear a helmet, yada yada yada. So um, I'm just going to show you kind of what we use for riding wheelies. That one we don't use yet, although Bruce would actually requested that we do a wheelie video on his bike. <laughs> so this is um, Carter's Vino, um, a buddy on Facebook, kind of uh, Ben, was saying that these are great bikes to wheelie, um, and Carter's taking it, and that's what he uses it for. That's a bone stock pre-bug, um, well close to, but this is a drum brake model pre-bug. So these are essentially the same bikes theoretically, minus the fact that um, there's some differences, but uh, the most important that we're going to talk about is the um, older styles drum brake and the new styles disc brake. And then uh, Carter's RC1 Derby, which I wouldn't want to Not do that. recommended no, for wheelies. That's a 60 mile an hour wheelie bike. Um, that's a perfect. These are, are really good beginner uh, wheelie bikes and just all around good wheelie bikes. But uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll let Carter kind of take over. Um, kind of go over the differences on the bikes and maybe um, this will kind of give you an idea of what to look for and uh, what's gonna be fitting for you for right now. All right, cool, so we wanna show you guys a couple of the differences uh, from bike to bike as far as what makes a good uh, good wheelie bike or a good beginner wheelie bike. Uh, probably one of the best bets you can go find uh, would be a pre-bug. You wanna get um, a pre-bug ideally, I mean, in my opinion, one with the longer seat. This is a 1990, right? 90? So, yeah. yeah, so this one's got the slim seat, but it still has the double seat. Um, the single seat is really hard to do wheelies because your weight balance is a little bit further forward. The other thing that I think helps a lot about these uh, pre-bugs, which feels weird when you're getting used to it, but the fact that you can actually ride this thing uh, on the pegs, once you get used to it, helps you sort of steer the bike around a little bit. Uh, maybe personal preference, but I think it definitely helps a little bit when learning how to do wheelies. Uh, the biggest thing you wanna look for on a wheelie bike is a bike with a pretty short wheelbase. Pre-bug's really good because it's got the vertical motor, obviously, so the motor is uh, pretty, tucked pretty far forward. Um, the other thing about the pre-bugs, the earlier models with the drum brakes are quite a bit lighter in the front, so it's gonna make doing wheelies on a stock pre-bug a lot easier uh, to get it to get it to pop up. The the disc brake stuff probably adds, what would you say, maybe five pounds to the front or so with all that stuff. The wheels probably, are heavier, yeah, the five caliper and all that so. stuff. So pre-bug, especially a drum brake pre-bug, is gonna be one of your best options. It's also a pretty easy bike to find in good condition too. Um, and my suggestion with any of these wheelie bikes, if, you've, if you're just trying to learn wheelies, would be learn wheelies on a pretty much bone stock bike. Maybe a little bit of transmission tuning or a better clutch, but not 70cc with a tuned pipe or anything like that. Any sort of peaky tuned pipe is gonna make the bike a lot harder to sustain slow wheelies. So we got uh, pre-bug here, and this is stock pre-bug. Um, we have Brandon's pre-bug here, which is, you're, you're on a Corsa now, right? That's a Corsa, yeah. So this is, a, this is an example of once you've learned how to do slow wheelies on a stock pre-bug, you can start doing some modifications to it. Um, like I said, I would I would start and learn how to do at least a couple block wheelies on a stock pre-bug. Once you've done, I don't know, what did you say, block or two, once you're comfortable going a block, you can start doing a little bit of modification, but I would, I would say you wanna be comfortable going short distances with the bike stock. So when, the more power you have, the easier it is to flip backwards um, unexpectedly, whereas a stock pre-bug is not really gonna to tend to flip backwards because it doesn't have very much power. So this bike, would be an example of a nice sport build for doing wheelies on. This is Corsa, and you're on C16 now, right? Yeah. Yeah, so C16 with a small carburetor, it's a CP. Um, I think you got a CP on here, right? Pulling your CP. Yeah, so one. CP carburetor. Um, the, the other kind of thing you want to look out for, especially if you're trying to modify a bike to be better for wheelies, you don't want race components. You don't want 12, 13, 14,000 RPM pipes and cylinders. Um, you can theoretically still do wheelies on it, but they're going to be more of uh, kind of high speed power wheelies, not so much little short brappy wheelies. So you're not going to get the balance point as easily because once you get up on the balance point, it's going to get pretty scary. If your, if your pipe doesn't hit until 12,000 RPMs, it's going to want to flip you back rather than be nice and comfortable. Um, the other thing on this one, 
Obviously the front end's been beefed up, big brakes. This bike does have our 12 inch wheel kit, which uh, I think it helps doing wheelies on the pre-bug. Um, but it, again, it's gonna add a little bit of weight over the front end, especially with disc brake stuff. So if you're literally just trying to do wheelies, I would probably stay with drum brakes just for that weight balance. But if you're trying to have a bike that you ride, have good handling and do wheelies, definitely disc brakes are our big uh, improvement in the front. The other thing that's gonna improve your wheelies a bit is doing a, a naked bar setup with uh, handlebars that are uh, a little bit more ergonomic. The stock handlebars are pretty skinny and they tend to get you a little bit cramped. Um, and the brake levers are a little bit on the small side too. So there's not too much to grab onto there. Um, so upgrading all that stuff helps with wheelies as well. The naked bars also take some weight off the front too. And um, one thing to mention is I've always noticed is having your brake set up properly. Yeah. Like this is really older cables. They're going to be more squishy, right? So it doesn't really spring back. You want to have really, really good feel in that brake. Yep. The better you can get your rear brake as far as like lubing up your, your yeah. cable, um, having better levers. If you have bad feeling in your rear brakes, it's not going to get your brakes right when you hit them. You're going to have to go through that spongy feeling mm -hmm. and doing wheelies. You want to rely on just basically being able to just tap that rear brake and get it to come back down or get it to stop from going back. And that's how you can get on that you know, kind of 12 o'clock balance point is having really, you want to trust your brakes. You don't want to have sketchy brakes that don't always hit when you just barely tap them. Well, yeah, you can see how these snap, kind of snap back. So it's real, you know exactly where your brakes are grabbing. If you have squishy old cables, replace them because you're, it's never, you're never going to feel that confident with your brakes because yep. you need to know right where your brakes are going to grab, right where they engage and everything. So yeah, that's another thing with it too, is if you can adjust your brakes, basically spin your, if you have drum brakes with adjustability, obviously if it's disc brakes, this doesn't matter. But if you have drum brakes in the back, if you spin your rear wheel, and adjust your adjuster until it just barely starts to drag and then click it back one click. So it's basically the tightest your rear brake can be. At least in my opinion, that helps with wheelies quite a bit. It might be a little bit of a personal preference thing, but I think it's as tight as your rear brake can be, you want it there. And also some of these bikes, especially this, the pre-buck has pretty good rear brakes, but like the Vino for instance, has pretty small rear drum brakes. So I've noticed if I'm doing wheelies for in you know an hour or two hours out in the neighborhoods and stuff like that in mexico obviously not, <laughs> not in the united states definitely um, the rear brakes get a little bit heat soaked and stop working as good so if you're going for long sessions you might need to get back down and adjust your rear drum brakes every once in a while because they do get heat soaked and stop working as good the cable stretches a little bit once it gets hot so that's a good example of i guess mid-sport built wheelie build so you still have an expansion pipe and all that kind of stuff um we'll use the vino as an example for uh for it's not as souped up as that but well it's something um hasn't talked about yet is when you first practice wheeling i practice for about a solid year every single day every day for at least an hour and it's really like this bike is silent and it's really there nice because yep. if you're in a neighborhood and you're practicing your neighbors want to kill you with <laughs> that bike is really loud now but, and so like, you know, Carter and I went to Vegas and he went into a neighborhood at three o'clock in the morning and could wheelie, not Vegas, this is actually, sorry. Uh, Mex Vegas, Mex Mexico. Vegas, Mexico. Yeah. Um, and he could wheelie at, you know, three o'clock in the morning in complete silence. And I couldn't because I just, I, yep. I didn't want to do that to people. So there is something nice to be said. There's something to be said about having a quiet, a quiet setup. So that's kind of what yeah, Carter so would that's get into. Exactly that's exactly what I've left this one. This one's uh, this one has a 70 cc low C casket um, stock squish, so it's pretty low compression. Um, I didn't check it, but the squish on the Melosi kits ends up being pretty big, like 1.1 or 1.2 millimeters, which helps the low compression, keeping uh, keeping the power band really low. Bone stock exhaust, um, stock airbox, but with the uh, the snorkel removed, it's got a, a small Delorto 17.5 millimeter carb. Um, everything else is stock crank. Um, stock intake, stock reads, uh, the transmission, which I'll post a video on that one, on, the, uh, on this one too. The transmission's uh, sort of modified, but not extremely. The big thing on, on any build like this, where you're going for a, a silent wheelie bike, would be a good clutch. That's probably the number one upgrade part you could do in your transmission. Most of these bikes, they have a pretty weak two-shoe clutch. Um, you wanna ditch that right away. That'll heat soak in no time if you're doing wheelies. But this was, like Brandon was saying, um, intended to do pretty much silent wheelies. It does make a little bit of noise, but for the most part, it's like half as loud as a bike with uh, with an expansion pipe. Um, the other reason why I kept the stock exhaust is because even with the 70cc, 
the stock exhaust on these two-stroke scooters is gonna keep your power band pretty low. This bike made the majority of its power between six and 7,000 RPMs on the dyno, so the power band is really low. And what that does is give you nice torque for when you're doing a wheelie, so you don't have to wrap the engine out. It kind of just burp, 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 and sits on the balance point. So this would be a good example of a very mild sport build. I wasn't looking for really much higher top speed, although it does go about 50 miles an hour, so it's pretty, it's quite a bit better than stock. Mainly I was looking for a torque upgrade, because if you're going down the road at 35, 40 miles an hour, the stock bike, if you just barely got off the balance point, would not be able to get the bike back up at all. Whereas this one, if I'm going any speed under 50 miles an hour, even if the bike starts to drop back down, it has enough of that grunt to be able to get the wheel back up. Um, the other thing about this bike is I've done some modifications to lighten the front end quite a bit. So it's got a different uh, stem on here. I'm not running the Speedo. The Vinos, if you guys have seen the Vinos before, have this big, huge headlight that's got metal brackets in it. The whole headlight and turn signal assembly weighs probably 10 pounds on this bike. Um, and it's all in the very front of the bike. So anything you can do on your bike to modify it. So anything from like your seat forward is lighter, the better it's gonna be. So bikes with fuel tanks in the in this floorboard, like Dio's and stuff like that. You can still do really good wheelies if you get used to it. This bike, the fuel is in the very back of the bike. So if I have a full tank of gas, the balance point on this bike is almost just sitting. So I'm, I'm like basically just sitting on it right there and it's balancing, not doing anything. So that's a big thing with a uh, wheelie bike, as far as if you don't have enough power to make the front end of the bike lighter. So you don't actually need power to do good wheelies. You have a really, really, really solid balance point. Um, the other thing is too, uh, Joe was kind enough to bring these, uh, these, uh, kind of pretty unique hubs. So this is a Vino and Jog drum brake hub setup, um, that has a uh, really nice wheels to it. And I was pretty shocked with the Vino, the stock wheels weigh almost double what these do. So that's another good upgrade. Um, I was thinking about taking the fender off, but I felt it and it really only weighs like maybe a quarter of a pound. So I can justify losing the look just for a little bit of weight. Um, LED headlight, again, that's on there just so I can kind of ride around at night. But this would be a good setup for neighborhood, like Brandon was saying, neighborhood practice, that kind of stuff. It's really fun to be able to go out in, you know, apartment complexes in Mexico, obviously. It's illegal in the United States to <laughs> really. So, but anything where you don't want people being like, what's that lawnmower weed eater thing doing wheelies where if I'm doing wheelies, it's almost stock silent noise. So this would be a, this would be a good one. Jog also just as good as Vino. Um, they're just a little bit harder to come by than the Vinos. Um, I guess that's it. Anything else about this one? Well, and this is a good example where a lot of people think you have to have a big board kit. You have to have your bike kitted. You, you have to have power to, to pull the wheel off the ground, but this is a perfect example that you really don't like. And this bike did do starting. good wheelies bone stock. We both got wheelies on this bone stock. It just didn't have quite the torque I yeah. was looking for. I just wanted a little boost in torque. That was pretty much it. Not really overall horsepower. I mean, you could just about, if the bike is a good bike to begin with, you could just about wheelie it you know, in bone stock form, yep. it's just going to be that you're not going to be able to keep the wheel up past, you know, yeah. 15 miles an hour. You can do slow wheelies really great, but, yep. but down low, you're not, you're not going to be able to do it at higher speed. So that's where you end up go shifting into something like this, where once you've kind of learned this and you've learned it at a certain speed, if you want to be able to do them faster, but you do that faster and you lose some of the, some of the slow, some of the slow speed wheelies too. Like Carter can just pretty much idle this thing I vertical. Come to almost a complete yeah. stop on this bike. The other thing too, with the wheelie bike, um, if you have a little bit more power, you can get away with using um, uh, like an upgear kit, um, a really mild upgear kit to get around maybe 10 or 11 to one final drive ratio. Um, I like, as long as you don't mind, you know, being capped at like 45, 50 miles an hour, I don't mind having stock gears because you can go down to that low, low, low wheelie speed. If you have gears, it sort of kills your under, under five or 10 mile an hour, depending on your gears, because your, your transmission is already in its lowest gear, whereas my lowest gear on this bike, I can creep along doing wheelies at like one mile an hour and it still has variator at that speed. So that's another thing to consider too, if you're not uh, if you're not concerned about having a bike that goes 50 plus, definitely keep it stock gears for wheelies. You wanna talk about your other wheelie bike? Yeah, let's do this one. <laughs> you guys have probably seen videos of this doing wheelies and we can link to it and stuff like that, but this was my last wheelie bike before that Vino uh, and it had more of a, more of a mild engine build in it. So I got the RC1 uh, Velocity 94cc in this bike. It does phenomenal power wheelies for days. Like whatever speed you want to go, it'll pull the front wheel up. You can be going 60 miles an hour and if you lay into it, it'll pull the front wheel up. The problem with that, it's fun. It's definitely fun, but you almost completely lose controllable slow wheelies. So you have to 
basically be on the power man. It's more like you're riding a, what, like a CR, CR, CR 250, 250 or something where yeah. it's like literally you're just on the pipe. Um, I can't really do controlled 20 mile an hour wheelies on this bike anymore because it just wants to go faster when you're doing a wheelie. So something to consider too, if you, if you want to do wheelies and you have a bike that's really built, um, you can learn wheelies on it, but it gets a little bit more dangerous because the thing with this bike is if you're not really confident with that rear brake, this bike, if it goes up, is gonna flip flip you back off the bike before you even know it. So if you're not really confident with that left hand braking once you hit your balance point, you'll go you'll go over immediately on this bike. Which if, Chad, if you're Chad. watching, yeah, sorry buddy. <laughs> well, yeah, perfect example. He had basically same old chassis, motor. old yeah, motor, so. but but with some this, this is not this, still 15 this, horsepower. Yeah, so, yeah, this wouldn't be something you would want to learn on because you're the only time you're going to be learning you're going to be doing 50 you know 40 yeah. to 60 miles an hour and falling at 40 to 60 um does not feel good no. i'd rather fall at you know 10 miles yeah, an hour if you're, going, if you're doing slow parking lot wheelies and you go down going 10 miles an hour sure you might fall over and you could get randomly hurt but your chances of getting severely hurt pretty much no chance of road rash um and you're just gonna basically fall yeah. off the bike. That'd be another thing to mention too, is if you're learning, don't go buy the cleanest, cheeriest pre-bug or whatever you can find. Buy like, buy a pre-bug that's $500 yeah. at scratch panels, something like that, or hit us up. We have used panels and stuff like that too. If you have a cherry one and you wanna practice. Also, um, Brandon found this out the hard way too, um, without having uh, frame sliders on the bike, it basically just shreds anything it hits. So we have these frame sliders that were made here locally. Um, you can mount them anywhere you want. I would suggest obviously having it mounted on a metal part of the bike. You could theoretically have it on the panel, but that's not gonna yeah. help. It's gonna crack it either way. But if you have this kind of stuff, it's gonna save your, your cleanish bike from just getting destroyed if you do fall over. So. Yeah, because I've wrecked. So this bike, make sure your grips, you have good grips. <laughs> yeah. Um, this glue, so when you're when you're riding a wheelie, everybody's different, but I'm typically like this, and I was vertical going down a hill, and the glue had um, was loose, and my grip spun, and I couldn't reach. Went over backwards, um, went down, ended up being able to ride away. Wasn't Lost this the same protectors too, or was yeah. this a new set? No, these are the, the same, same protectors. Yeah. So I went down, and these protected the bars. Um, they but protected the, panels were done. the levers. It destroyed the destroyed the levers. You're on a pre bog if you don't run the rear rack you'll um, destroy your light as well. So I make sure to run the rack. Um, oh, that's another thing to mention. If you're gonna do pre-bug wheelies, I think the rack actually helps. Not to, like if you're sitting way back here, it gives you something to kind of feel like you're sitting, when you're doing a wheelie, to, you're sitting on, on the another, rack, but yeah. you're using it as sort of like a butt rest almost, rather than if I, I've done wheelies with pre-bugs without that. And you, you feel like you're just gonna kind of slide off kind of the end of the yeah. seat. Not like you do, but it helps you feel like you're sitting on something. So that's. And, and one I've noticed too is tires mm -hmm. having, so I air my tires down a uh, buddy, Corey Core in, in Boston yep. years ago was telling me to do that. So these old tires do really good. It's kind of, if they're actually seem like to learn a little bit more worn it out is better. swears by those tires. Yeah. The Michelin, uh, the Michelins, the um, Michelins. I noticed, so I had hide nows like this. They're kind of more pointy. I had them on my pre-bug and it was a nightmare to yeah. wheelie. It couldn't, it, it it was very hard to keep it going straight. It wanted to fall from one side to the other. Yep, the so, more of like a flat profile tire you have, the better for yep. sure. So. so these Michelins are, are are more of a, they're more of a flat profile. So these were, um, and that's what Carter runs too. Yep. So there you have it. We'll make another video riding wheelies in a minute. So we're across the street here, our own private this is a scooter swap shop private wheelie strip here. We've got Carter. Uh, he's going to give you guys a little rundown on how to do it. Keep in mind this is for beginners, so um, pretty basic stuff. While he's over there getting race ready, preps, um, I'll say, guys have never done it before, practice, 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 practice. I went outside every day for um, probably a year and practice every single day. I never fell, but the important thing that I can say is find your balance point. Um, you don't need to be going fast. You can always, if you have blinkers on your bike, you can take them off the back. And if you go vertical and you don't feel confident, you can always slide right off the back of the scooter onto the ground. Start out with your legs on the ground. You can start out with your legs dragging to the side with your feet on the ground, just finding that vertical balance point. Everybody has a different, um, different technique, but that's kind of how I started. Um, but yeah, November day, it's just awesome here in Portland, so figured may as well take advantage of it. Um, so, yeah, so I learned on a pre-bug, 
Uh, Carter, I think he learned on a pre-bug as well. So um, now he rides that Vino and I ride the pre-bug around, so. ask us questions about technique and whatever we're happy to make different videos and whatnot just figured it's fun it's a, it's fun to do um, just be careful wear your gear um, I always at least wear pants and a hoodie or long sleeve shirt at least but gloves are very important get gloves that are tight don't get real loose gloves if you have real loose gloves sometimes the loose gloves will get caught up in your levers I've had that happen before one finger will go over another um, and, uh, and that's a recipe for disaster. So if you have gloves, make sure they fit really good and I would just suggest wearing them because uh, hands, it's not fun when you go down and rip your hands to shreds, so. So with this setup on this bike, you could go if you're good at what you, if you're good at wheeling. I mean, Carter could probably go. I don't know how many miles, but um, once you find that sweet spot, your balance point, you don't really have to use your back brake that much. Um, I can go for a pretty good amount of distance, and I've just been doing it for about a year and a half. Carter's been doing it a lot longer. Um, our buddy Nick, he go around up corners, and uh, another buddy too. I don't know where he is now, but. Um, Another buddy can go downhill, uphill, around corners. Like it just doesn't matter. It, that that dude just. Some guys get it, and you just. Um, uh, it just takes time. It's not gonna be natural for some people, or just in general, I guess. But uh, some people it is natural. But if you've been riding dirt bikes for a long time, um, then it, it comes pretty easy. But it still probably take you a year. So. Carter's talking to the phone right now for you guys. Cause that's just the type of guy he is. We don't actually want to ride wheelies today. We're doing it just for you guys. This is painful for us to do. It's not fun. It's not enjoyable. So yeah, we're making sacrifices every day for our customers. really windy too. So this is a benefit of having more of a mild bike. See, you can just go super slow. My bike, I can't quite go that slow. I can get pretty close, but you get a kitted bike, it's gonna be really hard to do slow wheelies like that. So that's where these are fun, because you can, I mean, you can do, the slow wheelies are fun too, so. Um, that's where you want to kind of have more of a more of a modest mile build or a stock bike, but um, Really, when you're learning, you shouldn't really be going any faster than 10 or something. Learn how to do your slow wheelies first, learn your balance, go a distance, and then if you want to, you get to the point where, where you can't keep the bike up because you don't have enough power, then you can look into kitting it. But it's, or, I mean, you can kit it right off the bat, but, but just don't go too crazy with, uh, with doing your build because it's just going to make it much more challenging and harder to learn in the beginning. So we're going to try to get you guys a first person and third person perspective at the same time here. Hopefully you can hear everything okay. Um, this is uh, not an ideal first wheelie spot, but we got a shop over there. 
um, and then just like a little kind of abandoned road here where they're gonna build a new house or something in a while but nice spot that you're not gonna necessarily be worried about getting uh, busted by the cops um, nice day here in Portland too it's pretty nice it's like 55 degrees but yeah just show you guys you know a little couple little things breaking kind of what it looks like to be up on a wheelie although this isn't a perfect perspective um, using a chest mount here probably a chin mount could be a little bit better but um, anyway the, the thing you're looking for and the thing you want to get first before even trying to do an extended wheelie would be literally get both feet on the ground and then kind of you know just see how your bike takes off this one takes off pretty abruptly but if you have a bike that's more stock than this it's not going to pull the front wheel up all that good but this bike for instance pulls the front wheel right up the other thing you want to be comfortable with is using your rear brake so you want to make sure basically you get two fingers i like two fingers I like to not use all four fingers. You can do three or whatever if you want to, but if you're gonna use four fingers, you don't have a solid grip on the handlebars. You wanna get a nice solid grip on the handlebars. Uh, if you're really comfortable with your rear brake or if you have rear disc brakes on your bike, one uh, one finger tends to work. This bike has kind of squishy drum brakes, so I like to use two. Um, and yeah, just go on an uh, open parking lot. The bigger the parking lot, the better. You know, no cars crash into, no potholes. Smooth pavement helps a lot. Um, survey your spot too. Make sure there's no gravel dirt anything like that or if there is you at least know it's there um and then just basically go slow speed you want to basically the first thing you're going to want to do is just uh pretty much once you're going at you know two or five miles an hour pretty slow you're going to want to basically just see how your bike pulls up the front wheel that's it you're not trying to get on the balance point you're literally just seeing how your bike pulls the front wheel up so once you're kind of comfortable with how the bike pulls the front wheel up um you can start to try to get back on the on the balance point and this is something that just takes time that's the only thing both brandon and myself and i saw brandon do it first firsthand you basically you're you have to just get really comfortable and it takes time you have to basically just go day after day after day nice summer days or nights or whatever you like right in the morning or the night or whatever just go out for for an hour an hour or two a day if you go if you go an hour a day you will start to get wheelies sooner rather than later and definitely it's one of those things where at first you're gonna you know maybe accidentally put your foot down you're gonna kind of fall sideways maybe or something like that but after some extended period of time you're gonna start to get two foot wheelies you're gonna start to get three foot wheelies you're gonna start to be going oh here i got like half a block you're gonna go oh i got you know half a mile it, go, it just goes up from there so you can set yourself little goals too you can set yourself hey i'm gonna learn how to do a wheelie for one block and once you get that it's uh it's kind of like an accomplishment it, it opens up what you can actually do in your own mind once you get a block go hey i could get two blocks probably this weekend go you know and then it just goes up from there and before you know it one summer if you put in enough practice you will have block wheelies in one summer if you're really committed to it and you have good hand-eye coordination and balance obviously if you struggle with balance it's going to take you a little bit longer to get good at them um, but once you've gotten the comfortable with kind of getting the, the front end up without using your brakes so just little little tiny wheelies you want to just kind of do do little wheelies and just see how it feels to be up on that back wheel because if you go too far and you don't know how to stop that it, you're going to go over so again once you're practicing anytime you're popping up have your hand on the brakes you never want to let go of that rear brake have two fingers or three fingers on the rear brake at any time you're trying to do wheelies and once you once you get past just doing little crappy wheelies what you can do is you can get back on the balance point and try to break. So what you're doing is you're, you're basically feeling like you want to fall backwards. That's that's what that's what scooter wheelies and motorcycle wheelies are. You're, you're falling backwards, but you're catching yourself with your rear brake right when you right when you fall backwards. And uh, forgive me if I kind of swerve today. It's uh, kind of windy too, but yeah. So anyway, once you get back on that rear balance point. You can feel it. You really can. It feels like you don't have to give it as much throttle. It kind of sits there instead of doing anything. So once you once you get up on the balance point, like right there, that's almost all coast. So once you once you're there, small throttle inputs. I'm giving it like eight throttle right now. And once I sit far enough back, you hit that rear brake. So hit that rear brake and then come back down. And if you're confident on that rear brake, you can save yourself from some pretty sketchy stuff too. If you hit that rear brake right when you're 12 o'clock or even past it you'll slam down sometimes but you will save yourself from going over backwards so if you uh if you start to get confident going at slow wheelies kind of get back there and forgive me it's windy so but the slower the wheelies i think it's good for practice doing fast wheelies and not using that rear brake it's fun it's kind of fun but you're not going to ever really get the balance point if you, if you try to go slower using the balance point the brake 
it's much more fun than just doing throttle wheelies. So if you're practicing, it's it's not a bad habit to get into to, to do throttle wheelies only. But if you're using uh, if you're using slow braking wheelies, it, it, you're going to get that balance point much better. So what you do is once you're on the balance point, brake, 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 brake, brake. And once you've got that balance point good, you can actually, especially if you're going slightly downhill, you can coast on the balance point. I've gotten two, three blocks just coasting downhill before too. It's uh, it's kind of hard to do, but that's basically you're using just the rear brake to sit on that balance point. And it's pretty, it's a little worrisome at first because it feels like you're kind of going to like go back, but that's what you want. You want to be almost tipping back. That balance point is literally right right where you're about to tip back. And some bikes have a more uh, easier balance point than others. I think Freebug has a pretty easy balance point. It's wide, meaning that uh, it's not a really pointy balance point. It's not right when you're about to go back. You have some leeway. Uh, the Vino's, since it has smaller 10 inch wheels, or the, the 9090s instead of the 12070s, um, your balance point tends to be uh, kind of peaky. Same with, you know, Dio or Jog. It's a little bit more of a sharp balance point, but Smaller wheelies, smaller wheels, like jog wheels and vino wheels, make it easier to go around corners. So you have a smaller balance point, a smaller circumference. You can tend to get, you can tend to get corners, which is, you know, we'll leave that for maybe our next wheelie tutorial. This is kind of the basics, but yeah. Um, putting your, if you have a pre-bug, um, sitting the farthest back you can helps. And then also using the pegs, even though it might feel weird, helps. Um, any bike, sitting further back helps. If you want to try to do a wheelie uphill, uh, you're, you're going to want to lean forward a little bit going uphill. Same with going downhill. You're going to want to kind of lean back going downhill. And change that changes your balance point. So more than you think, like shifting your weight around, shifting your feet around. Uh, just kind of try kicking your weight around, and you'll see how the bike reacts to it. The other thing with some bikes is, especially bikes like this Vino, that have the gas tank in the very tail of the bike. It's the furthest. So the gas tank on the Vino is literally like here to here. So if I have a full tank of gas compared to a half tank of gas, it makes a huge, huge, huge difference in how good the balance point is. So if you have a bike like a Jog um, or a Vino, um, I can't think of other ones right now, some Chinese bikes and stuff, that's what I learned on was just a Chinese GY6. Um, short one had the gas tank in the very back and it makes a big difference if the gas if the gas tanks are full it makes easier way easier wheelies bikes like pre-bugs and elites and stuff don't quite matter as much because the gas tanks a little bit further forward uh, and then the other thing is try not doing wheelies with like a you know big heavy tool bag under your seat so if you have a tool bag under your seat it makes doing wheelies much more difficult so yeah there's kind of the there's a tutorial from the ground up and like can't say it enough times practice don't go out your first week or whatever expecting to do wheelies like i'm doing here go out expecting to do five foot wheelies you know pop it up and actually get the balance point for two seconds that's that's good if you go out and you're getting the balance point um then that's a really good thing if uh if you if you're in it for a month and you've been going out every day when it's nice out then uh you'll, you'll eventually get good wheelies like if, you, if you're if you're dedicated to it most everybody i don't think there's any anybody that's necessarily you know you can learn it faster or something you can have a little bit better balance but it's something that if you're motivated to do you can do it you can do wheelies so we're gonna we're gonna go out and cruise around the neighborhood for a little bit and uh it looks like we might have someone there oh, so i'll show you guys some going around some corners and stuff like that and kind of explain a little bit more here in a minute but that should be pretty much the gist of it so This is the worst job ever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so we'll show you guys kind of what it looks like here for, uh, for a little neighborhood cruise. We got some good wheelies, good wheelie roads around here. The other thing is too, if you're not comfortable doing wheelies, don't freaking do wheelies around traffic. Go to a parking lot or something like that. You'll see me doing wheelies kind of next to traffic. I don't really want to get a ticket today, so I probably won't. But if, if you're not comfortable doing wheelies, you don't want to crash. You don't want to crash in front of a car that's right behind you or something like that. So go to, you know, if you have a little cul-de-sac or a really chill neighborhood, that's a good spot. Uh, you, you don't want to uh, be around cars really doing wheelies too much. It's, uh, once you're good at them, it's kind of fun. And, and you know, people will test it. It's, 
it is pretty fun doing wheelies on the street, but really, when you're practicing, leave it to a parking lot. It's a lot more fun, plus you don't have to think about cops and stuff at the same time. You can basically do your wheelies without worrying about like that kind of stuff. But you're, so once you're, once you're more comfortable with that brake spot, and you have a bike that you're comfortable with, you just do slow wheelies and just go cut around neighborhoods, especially if you have a bike that's not loud. Too. You'll be able to go around neighborhoods and not be like a freaking menace to society. If you have a quiet bike, it's quite fun. So right here, we've got our little local kind of wheelie spot here. So right now, I'm just basically, I'm sitting back on the Vino. I, I tend to have one foot off and basically every time you start to feel, you'll get that instinct where it's like break, 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 break. And uh, some bikes like doing wheelies downhill better, some like wheelies on level better, some bikes like doing wheelies uphill better, it sort of depends on the weight balance of the bike, usually uh, usually if you have a bike with a really light front end like this bike, it's, it's a tad easier to do wheelies going downhill than it is uphill because you get in this thing where it wants to just stop moving if it's too light in the front, but luckily the Vino is pretty balanced, if I had one suggestion, it would be honestly doing a, a wheelie Vino, but Vino or, you know, Vino is basically the same thing as Jog, so either way it'll be the same, but Vino's are, you can find it for 200 bucks, no problem for beat up ones. And honestly, this bike is surprisingly good at wheelies. I did not expect it to be so good. I like doing wheelies on this bike more than my pre bug. So, and I've had a couple pre bugs. So, once you, you know, obviously, you're going to know your area better. So, no roads that you aren't, you know, if you're going to be practicing, you don't want kids running in front of you or, you know, anything like that. So, try to go places where there's not going to be kids and all that kind of stuff. And one thing is, if you start to get too much speed up and you're comfortable doing wheelies, you can get further back on that balance point. What it does is, and people tend to really like wheelies too, like everyone can use them. But if you're going too fast, like you start to get some speed up and you're, you know, you've got the balance point down and stuff like that. If you lean further back on your balance point and kind of coast and use the brake, you can actually slow down quite a bit, even going downhill with wheelies too. You just gotta, that rear brake is really important. And again, like we said in the first explained spot, make sure your rear brake is good. Deglaze it. If your shoes are worn out, replace them. Uh, if your cable's like sticky, try to lube it. If that doesn't help, get a new one. You're, you're going to make your life a lot easier. If you have a squishy rear brake, it's a recipe for eating crap. So. Turns are something that usually, like for me, I can go around corners for 
it took me two years to practice before I could do what I'm doing right now. Well, more than that, uh, doing corners, some bikes are way easier than others. Like the pre bug is easy on sweeper corners, but does not like going around sharp corners doing wheelies. Whereas this Vino, I can go circles, um, like 15 foot circles, and then pretty much any regular street corner I can go down. But there's shop i think that's probably a pretty good video for you guys uh, hopefully it helps obviously if there's anything you guys have any questions for post it up in the comments uh, we might do another one that's more of a of an experience wheelie video uh, again cannot reiterate how much practice makes a difference if you if you go out once a week it's kind of like if you're trying to learn another language or something like that you have to do it all the time otherwise you're kind of forgetting every single time every time you have to sort of get back into it day in the summer what happens is every day you remember exactly what you're doing so practice 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 it's uh one of those things where it it's commitment you know you'll 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 be frustrated you'll be like kind of bored at first because you're not getting them but then two months into it one month into it however you know depending on your muscle memory and stuff like that obviously coordination and balance people have different balance but uh, if you if you go out consistently for one summer you will you will have some amount of wheelies whether it be oh let me wheelie across that little bridge thing or you know let me wheelie to the end of my street or let me wheelie if you're really you know if you're getting it good you start going with two blocks you start walking them off in you know half miles or you start walking it off and oh i did a wheelie for for 10 minutes or any number of things or anything you can set a goal for that's a good thing so for instance if you have a nice neighborhood right here and you're and you're you know you've gotten a couple houses up there, if you tell yourself hey in a month i'm going to know how to do a wheelie to the end of this neighborhood there's a good chance that if you set that goal and you practice at that you'll get it you'll probably get it sooner than you think um, but it's all about like that let us know in the comments peace